Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, and today we're going to talk about can you use a virtual mailbox address or a PO box address to file a trademark registration application. So if you're filing for a trademark with the United States Patent and Trademark Office, you may not want to use your home address. Let's say you have a business or you're going to start a business and you haven't gotten any sort of office space. Maybe it's a business that's going to always be virtual or you're just going to work from home. Or maybe you haven't gotten to the point where you're renting out office space, but you want to get that trademark on file, but you don't want to use your home address for privacy concerns. So can you get a virtual mailbox or a PO box to use on your trademark application? So the short answer is yes, but okay. So here's the thing on the application for a trademark, with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. You actually have to give them both a mailing address, which is public, and that's gonna actually be on your certificate if your trademark goes through. And it's gonna be in the publicly available database, anybody can find it. And you're also gonna have to give them your residency address. So let's look at the trademark application so you can see what I'm talking about here. So on the trademark application, once you log in and, and everything, I'm gonna say, pretend that I am not an attorney and get to the next screen. The next screen is gonna ask who is the owner of the trademark. So if you're an individual, it could be you if you haven't formed any sort of legal entity. If you formed an LLC or corporation, it might be the LLC or corporation. So you put the owner of the mark, is it individual, is it LLC, et cetera. And then you have to put the information about the individual. So let's just say it's you, an individual person. So you have to put not just who the owner is, your name, your legal name, but also your citizenship. Then you need to scroll down to go to mailing address. So if you put in the mailing address, this is the thing that's publicly available. So this, this part can be a PO box. It can be a virtual mailbox address, UPS store, whatever. That's totally fine. But then there's something called the domicile address. So the domicile address, is not in the publicly available part of the database. So as an attorney, I can look at the TSDR and look at the file for a trademark application and see a bunch of information. I cannot see the domicile address. The member of the public who doesn't really know how to log in, who's just searching for trademarks and trademark applications, can't see the domicile address. It's supposed to only be seen by the USPTO staff, the examiner who's looking at your application. So why do they need that? What is a domicile? Let's go ahead and click on this and see it'll have some information about that. So domicile of the trademark owner or holder is the place the individual person resides and intends to be their principal home or the principal place of business headquarters where the entity senior executives or officers ordinarily direct and control the entity's activities. The PO box, virtual mailbox, can totally be used for your mailing address, but generally speaking, not for the domicile address. So why do they need a domicile address? Here's the thing. If your domicile is here in the United States, then you can represent yourself before the Patent and Trademark Office. You can do a DIY application. You can file it yourself. But if your domicile address is outside of the United States, either the businesses or you as a human person outside the United States, you have to hire a lawyer. Why is that? Well, the theory that what they've said is that it's to combat fraud because they got a ton of applications in the last couple of years from outside the United States that were sketchy. And this is like their way to combat that problem is to make them hire a domestic attorney, an attorney in the United States. I personally think that is a rule that makes it overly difficult for people with not as much <laughs> great effect. You know, this is a time where you're trading security for effectiveness of the entire system. I think the idea is that the Patent and Trademark Office is saying we care about U.S. citizens and U.S. companies getting trademarks. We don't really care about people from other countries. That's not our job. So we're focusing our attention on U.S. citizens and U.S. companies. That's just the rule is the short answer. You, if your domicile is outside the United States, you have to hire an attorney. But Let's assume that you're here in the United States. You just want to keep your home address private. So the idea is, is that here, what you can do is put your PO box or virtual mailbox in the mailing address part. And then in the domicile address, you put your home address and it's supposed to stay private. I'm not going to guarantee because someone could have the system, but generally speaking, it will be private.
Now you may think, well, I'm gonna, I have a virtual mailbox address that's not a PO box. It's a, it's a street address at this virtual mailbox company. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. Is that gonna work? Well, here's the thing. The trademark office will actually look up that address. Like they'll literally go on Google Maps and look at the street view and see what it is. And if it's a UPS store, they're gonna see it's UPS store. Also, they have the, a way to look it up in a post office database. If you use some kind of virtual mailbox, you're gonna get an office action. You're gonna get a reply from the trademark office that's kind of like this. And this is a real one that I got from a client. I X'd out, I redacted their personal information. So they will look up that address in the US Postal Service coding accuracy support system and see that it is a commercial mail receiving agency. So unless you you are the commercial re mail receiving agency, they can tell that it's you don't work there. So what can you do? So the, the first answer and the most easiest is you give them your street address, your home address, or the actual location of your business for that domicile address. That's the easiest answer. And actually that's that's always what I've done with clients is we just give them that address. But let's say you have no fixed address. So you can provide documentation to support your argument. So first, if that actually is your US domicile address, like let's say you don't, it's not, it may be a commercial mail receiving agency, but you actually are located there. You, maybe it's a co-working space or something and you actually go in there and work. So then they say you have to either have a rental lease or mortgage agreement for office space or your annual or quarterly report or other similar report. Now I'm not 100% sure what exactly they're going to accept. This is something I haven't tried yet, but what I would probably try is whatever annual report you file with the state. So in some states, it's literally called an annual report. In California, it's called a statement of information and it has what your address is. And then that matches up, it matches up. Any sort of rental lease mortgage agreement for the office space. So you're not gonna have a mortgage because um, then it would be a street address, but let's say you actually have a rental agreement for that co-working space that you have. That, that's what I'm talking about. The other thing is a detailed explanation that the applicant has no fixed physical address. So this is something I have not tried, so I don't know what argument they're going to take. But what it says is that if you have no physical headquarters, because the business is conducted virtually, then you state for the record the applicant has no physical has no fixed physical address and you provide a detailed explanation of the circumstances. So this isn't gonna work if you're an individual, okay, because you have a location. But if you're applying on the behalf of an LLC or corporation and it is completely virtual, then maybe there's an argument you can make here. It may be something where you talk about how you're, you know, you do Amazon drop shipping, you sell eBooks, you know, there's no physical location. Now the thing is, if you have an Etsy business, I'm gonna give that specific example, you do a physical location, most likely. You're making the stuff and you have inventory somewhere. That's your physical location. You're gonna have a hard argument there. But if you're doing drop shipping, where you never have possession of the products, they go straight from the manufacturer or whatever to the person who's getting them, or if you are selling eBooks or something that's completely virtual, you have an argument to be made here. And you're gonna have to make that argument to them. I don't know exactly what argument is going to work because as I said, I haven't had to do this yet because for all my clients, we just give them the home address, but it is something you could do. This is, will typically come up for people when they're actually maybe traveling all around, like maybe you live in your van, right? You don't have a street address, okay? You're traveling all around or maybe you're traveling in different countries or you're from outside the United States, but your, your LLC or corporation is actually located here in the United States. So. It's gonna be real special circumstances and you're gonna to have to tell them about why there is no physicality to your business. But as I said, if you have a sole proprietorship or if you're filing on as an individual person and the owner, you're gonna to have to give your street address because you live somewhere. And the downside is if you're outside the United States, then you're gonna to have to get an attorney to represent you. And I'm gonna do another video all about that side of things if you're outside the United States. But if you're inside the United States, you can represent yourself before the Patent and Trademark Office, you have to just give them your street address. Again, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. If you have any questions about what we've talked about today, feel free to post them in the comments below and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Subscribe for more videos like this. Thumbs up if you found this video helpful. And if you'd like more connection and be able to answer more questions, you can join the Discord or the Patreon. You can check out the description below for links. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.